Hi friends, Miss Cassie here with Soul in Public Library's Digital Storytime. This month we're talking all about different kinds of pets. And this week we are gonna talk about rabbits and hamsters. But first we need to sing our welcome song and we need to get our clapping hands ready. <laughs> we're gonna wiggle our fingers and shake our hands and rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast. And put them on our knees. Okay, here we go. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. What do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. What do we do after we stomp our feet? That's right, we twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, twirl around. All right, for our last verse, we're going to be as quiet as we can. And we're going to whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray, hooray. If you want to read theme song this month is can you and we're going to do the actions of different animals now remember on our song sheet we have some pictures that are in place of some of our words and that is called a rebus song or a rebus story and it is one of the ways <laughs> that you can start to learn how to read so that's how our song is put together for this month. Are you ready to read and sing along today? Perfect. Here we go. Can you hop like a rabbit, wag your tail like a dog? Can you run like a hamster, stretch like a lizard on a log? Can you fly like a bird? Can you swim like a fish? Can you sit back down and be still like this? Yay! Great job, friends. Our first book today is Memoirs of a Hamster, written and, uh, by David Cillian and illustrated by Tim Bowers. And this author has also written Memoirs of a Goldfish <laughs> that we also have here at the library and might be a fun book to check out sometime. Night one. My life is perfect. I have a bowl full of seeds, a cozy pile of wood shavings, and room to run. I'm never leaving here. Question, who's the luckiest hamster in the world? Answer, me. Oh, look, doesn't he look so comfy? Night two. I was just telling myself, Seymour, you got it made when my exercise wheel was delivered. I like to work out. It's the best model around, the Fuzzy Boy 360. Shiny as a new dime and fast as lightning. I don't know how many miles I put in, but I was on that wheel all night. Have you ever seen a hamster run on a hamster wheel before? Yeah, hamsters need lots of exercise. So a hamster wheel is the perfect way for your hamster to run and run and run and run in their cage where they can stay safe. Night three. 
It took me a while to get the hang of my new water bottle, but it's great. It's important too. A hamster has to stay hydrated. Back to my wheel. I've got another hour to put in before daylight. Before daylight? That's right, hamsters are nocturnal. That means that they sleep during the day and they're awake at night. So Seymour is doing all of his exercising, all of his running at night. Night four. Little girl came by and gave me a kiss on the nose. Nasty. Hello, ever heard of germs? But she also gave me two yogurt drops. Question, what's better than a yogurt drop? Answer, two yogurt drops. I ate one and I tucked the other in my cheek to save for later. This hamster has it going on. So do you see how Seymour put that yogurt chip in his mouth, in his cheek? That's because hamsters have pockets in their mouths. And so they can put food and things in there, just like you might put something in your pants pocket. They put it in their cheek pocket and then they can carry it from one place to another place and save it for later. They're pretty cool. Night five. I was just climbing onto my wheel tonight when Pearl the cat came by. You know, she said, you run for miles every night but you never leave that cage. What's it all for? I don't know, I said. It's what hamsters do. What a complete waste of time, she said. Have fun in your cage. I'm going to the sunroom. Sunroom? What's a sunroom? Hmm. Do you think that cat is Seymour's friend? Or do you think that she may have ulterior motives for telling him about adventures outside of his cage? Hmm. Night six. Little girl woke me up to clean my cage today. She kissed me on the nose again. Barf. She needs to knock that off. But while she was carrying me around, I realized there's a lot of house around me that I haven't seen. It seems to go on forever. I tried as hard as I could, but I couldn't see a sunroom. Little girl gave me a yogurt drop and I completely forgot about the sunroom. Whatever a sunroom is, is it better than a yogurt drop? Answer, no. <laughs> I think yogurt drops are Seymour's favorite treat. What do you think? Night seven. I planned on running a marathon tonight, but my fuzzy boy 360 is a little squeaky. Pearl came over to the cage looking a little annoyed. You really need to get yourself out of there, she said. But why, I asked. I've got my wheel, I've got my seeds, I've got yogurt drops. You wouldn't need a wheel out here, she said. There's plenty of room to run. The staircase is made of sunflower seeds and the sunroom is filled with yogurt drops. As she was walking away, she turned around and said, but watch out for Hoover. Hoover? Who's Hoover? Do you think that cat is telling the truth? Do you think the stairs are made of sunflower seeds? Do you have sunflower seeds at your house? Okay, I guess I have sunflower seeds. Do you have stairs made out of sunflower seeds at your house? Me neither. Hmm. Night eight. I couldn't sleep a wink all day. Little girl came by and kissed me on the nose. Yuck. And then I had a terrible workout. I just couldn't focus. How could I concentrate knowing what I know? Imagine a whole staircase made of sunflower seeds and the sunroom. Don't I deserve to be in the sunroom? <sighs> Buck 
the dog came by to give my cage a sniff, and I said, Buck, do you like the sunroom? Big Goofy Buck said, I love the sunroom. It's so sunny. And he trotted away. I think Seymour is starting to feel left out. What do you think? Night nine, no workout tonight. I spent the whole evening putting together a plan. I went over every square inch of my cage and I think I've got it figured out. Operation Tasty Treat is set for tomorrow night. Hello staircase, hello sunroom. Night 10, good old Seymour is one smart hamster. What is he doing? Yeah, he's escaping. My escape plan went like clockwork. I moved the seed dish, then I was able to muscle the fuzzy boy to the front of the cage. I had a little trouble climbing the outside of the wheel. It kept spinning and I wasn't getting anywhere. But Sweet Pearl suggested I jam a sunflower seed at the side of the wheel and it worked. After that, it was easy. I shimmied up the wheel and popped the lid right off. Question, who's going to eat every yogurt drop in the sunroom? Answer, me. Night 11, note to self, cats are big, fat liars. I'm writing this from under the sofa. One wrong move and Pearl will have me for dinner. For starters, the staircase is not made of sunflower seeds. It's just carpet and it tastes like a sweater. And the sunroom is nice, but there wasn't a yogurt drop in sight. And when I heard Pearl, the big fat liar, say, hello, Seymour, I knew something was wrong. She looked really hungry, but all of that time on the wheel paid off. I raced past her and squeezed out of the sunroom just in time. I made it here, but now what? Pearl keeps clawing under the sofa, that big fat liar. I'll probably never see my cage again. Question, who's in big trouble? Answer, me. So what happened? Seymour escaped from his cage and he went on an adventure, but it was a trap. Pearl the cat was just trying to eat him. Poor Seymour. <sighs> Night 12, I'm doomed. I'll never make it out of here alive. I can see Pearl pacing back and forth. She says she's looking up recipes. Oh no, look, he's writing his last will and testament. Night 13, so hungry and tired I could barely move. I heard Pearl purring the way she does when she sleeps. It was my only chance. I tiptoed out from the back of the sofa and headed straight to my cage. I was going to make it, but suddenly there was a terrible, loud noise. <gasps> An enormous monster was coming right to me. I looked up at its terrible eyes and read the most frightening word, Hoover. Do you know what a Hoover is? Look at the picture. What is that machine called? That's right, it's a vacuum. Those are loud, right? Especially if you're just a tiny hamster. So loud and so scary. Oh, and it, the, the, the vacuum woke up Pearl and she is ready to pounce on Seymour. And he closes his eyes and just waits for it to be over. Then came the sweetest thing I've ever heard. <gasps> Seymour! It was suddenly very quiet. Hoover, Pearl, and Buck stopped in their tracks. And one surprised but happy little girl got to me first. She kissed me on the nose, a lovely, beautiful, sweet kiss. And I kissed her right back, twice. Night 14, my life is perfect. I have a bowl of seeds a cozy pile of wood shavings, and room to run. 
I'm never leaving here. Question, who's the luckiest hamster in the world? Answer, me. <laughs> the end. Okay, friends, so I have a little hamster friend here, and his name is also Seymour. <laughs> and we learned in our book that what do hamsters do with food that they want to save for later? That's right, they store it in their cheeks. They put it in their cheek pockets. So I have some snacks for my hamster, Seymour, here, and we're gonna feed him and he's gonna save these snacks for later, right in his cheeks. So we're gonna learn about some of the things that hamsters eat. So here is our first little snack for Seymour. Can you tell what this is? Yeah, it's a peanut. So we're gonna feed our peanut just right here to our friend Seymour and look, there it is just right, right in his cheek. Next, we have this little fruit. Can you tell what fruit this is? It has lots of little seeds and a little green on top and it's red. What is this? That's right, it's a strawberry. Yum, yum, yum. And hamsters can eat the greens on top too, so he's gonna keep that in his cheek for later. Next, we have another piece of fruit. Now, you don't usually wanna give hamsters too much fruit because then they can have too much sugar and that can be bad for them. But we do have another piece of fruit here. What fruit is small and round and purple? That's right, it's a grape. Yum, yum, yum. There you go, Seymour. All right, next we have a vegetable. That's important for humans and hamsters. Now this is an orange vegetable. Sometimes it has greens on top if you haven't cut them off yet. It grows in the ground and bunnies like to eat it too. Do you know what this is? Yeah, a carrot. Ooh, and this is kind of big. Let's see if Seymour has room. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, there we go. Ooh, his cheeks are getting kind of full. Okay, and here's our last treat for Seymour the hamster. Can you guess what this might be? Now it looks like a small egg <laughs> and maybe it could be that, but for our activity, it's not an egg. What was Seymour's very favorite treat from our book? Do you remember? It was, he loved it so much that he was willing to travel all the way to the sunroom to eat as many as he wanted. Do you remember what it was? Yes, a yogurt drop. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Here you go, Seymour. All right, with his cheeks all full, look at that full of yummy treats. He's gonna head back to his cage and spit out <laughs> his treats and make a little pile and save them for later. Thanks for helping feed Seymour, friends. Good job. For our last book, we are gonna learn more about pet rabbits. <laughs> but first, we're gonna learn this little finger rhyme. It's called, Here's a Bunny. So our hand is gonna be our bunny with two little ears sticking up. And our bunny has kind of funny ears. So one sticks straight up and one bends over a little bit. So we've got our little bunny. Here's our bunny with ears so funny, and here's a hole in the ground. When a noise he hears, he perks up his ears and jumps in his hole in the ground. Are you ready? Now let's do it together. Here's a bunny with ears so funny, and here's his hole in the ground. When a noise he hears, he perks up his ears and jumps in his hole in the ground. Great job. All right, we're gonna do it one more time. Maybe try with your other hand. Make your other hand into a bunny. Here we go. 
Here's a bunny with ears so funny, and here's his hole in the ground. When a noise he hears, he perks up his ears and jumps in his hole in the ground. Yay! Good job, friends. Our last book today is called Curious About Rabbits, and it is part of a series of books that we have about different kinds of pets. Sometimes you might think that you want a certain kind of pet, like a dog or a cat or a hamster or a rabbit, but maybe you don't know very much about those animals and what it would mean to have one of those animals as a pet. And so these books are great because they teach you some things about what these animals need from you as their caretaker and also some of the things that make them special and fun pets. So we are gonna ask some questions and get some answers in this book. First question, do pet rabbits make a lot of sounds? That's a great question. What do you think? I would think rabbits are pretty quiet, right? Let's find out. Rabbits are usually quiet, but they do make soft sounds. A happy rabbit might purr like a cat, hum, or even cluck. It sounds like a chicken, but much quieter. An unhappy rabbit might growl, hiss, or whimper. That's all good information to know. My rabbit made a honking noise. What does that mean? That means your bunny is excited. Is she eating a special treat? Yum! Honking can also mean I'm looking for love. Your bunny may want a mate. If you don't want baby bunnies, make sure you have two females or two males. Did you know that rabbits can have a new litter, that means baby rabbits, every month? And a litter of bunnies can have from four to 12 baby bunnies. That is a lot of bunnies. Oof. So you need to be prepared, right? Yeah. Why does my rabbit thump its back leg? Do you know what thump means? Like hits its back leg on the ground. Thump, thump, thump. Your rabbit is scared or nervous. Thumping is loud. In the wild, this tells other rabbits that danger is nearby. A scared rabbit may also flatten its ears and shiver. It will also run away and hide if it can. Rabbits can hear sounds almost two miles away. They have big ears to help with that, don't they? Why is my rabbit jumping in the air? Look at this rabbit. They're jumping pretty high. This is the happiest rabbit behavior. It's called a binky. A rabbit will jump in the air and twist its body. It looks pretty strange. But it's a rabbit's way of saying that it loves its life with you. It's kind of like a rabbit happy dance, right? Why does my rabbit kick? Rabbits kick when they are annoyed. If a rabbit kicks, it is trying to get away. If you are holding a kicking rabbit, put it down gently. A rabbit's spine that's its back, is fragile. A rabbit can hurt its back if it kicks too hard while it's being held. So you wanna make sure that your rabbit is healthy and safe. Why does my rabbit rub its chin on things? That means it is marking its territory. A rabbit has scent glands under its chin and by rubbing, it leaves a scent. It is saying, this is mine. This is called chinning. If your rabbit rubs its chin on you, 
it likes you a lot. Oh, that's cute. Do rabbits only hop around? That's a great question, right? Is that the only way that they move is by hopping from one place to another? No, sometimes rabbits walk. They do this when exploring a new place, but rabbits prefer hopping. It's easier. Their strong back legs were made for it. Hopping is the fastest way to get around. A bunny can move as fast as 50 miles an hour. That's almost as fast as when you're driving on Highway 1 if you're going down to Iowa City. That's almost as fast as your car. That's so fast. Why are rabbits always chewing on things? Rabbits need to chew. Their teeth are always growing. Kind of like human fingernails are always growing, right? And you need to trim them so they don't get too long. Well, rabbits, the way they trim their teeth is by munching on things. Chewing keeps their teeth short and healthy. What's safe for rabbits to chew on? Fresh hay is best. It makes up 90% of a rabbit's diet. Rabbit toys or cardboard also work. Man, and here I thought that rabbits mostly eat carrots, <laughs> right? But not true. We're learning things together. Could a pet rabbit survive in the wild? What do you think? If you have a pet rabbit and you don't want to have a pet rabbit anymore, can you just open your door and put it outside and let it run around and run away? What do you think? Our book says no. Pet rabbits wouldn't last long on their own. They've never had to find food or shelter and they haven't had to escape from predators. What are predators? They're animals that eat other animals. Like in our hamster book, Pearl, the cat, was a predator. And what was she trying to eat? Seymour, the hamster. And there are predators in the wild that like to eat rabbits. Pet rabbits are safest and happiest when they are well cared for. An indoor cage with a good hiding place is a good home. And then look, you can see in this picture some of the different kinds of rabbits. Oh, these have great names, right? Lion head, so it looks like they've got a mane. Mini lop, oh, that rabbit is very cute. A rex, oh, I wonder where I got that name from. Netherland dwarf and a Polish rabbit. I think that Polish rabbit looks the most like the Easter bunny. What do you think? Yeah. Now in the back of the book, there are even more questions that you might wonder about your rabbit if you're thinking about getting a pet rabbit or just wanna learn more about rabbits. And then in the very back, there is a glossary, which is, it tells us what some of those words mean that we talked about in the book like binky. Do you remember what a binky is? It's when a rabbit jumps into the air and twists its body, right? It's the rabbit happy dance. It's called a binky. Or a predator, an animal that hunts other animals for food. There's lots of really important words here. And there's also an index. So if you want to say, hey, I don't remember where the information was about why uh, rabbits rub their chins on things. You can look and say, oh, chin rubbing. That's on page 14. And then you can look at it and read the information again and look at the pictures. What a helpful book. All right, friends, that's the end of our story time this week. In our story times all in the month of March are sponsored by the Solon Women's Club. The Solon Women's Club is an awesome organization. They support the public library and the school libraries. In fact, they started the very first library in Solon. Can you believe that? So cool. We are so lucky to have their continued support all the way up to today. So it's time for our goodbye song. Are you ready? Here we go. We read a book, and we played a game, and we sang
sang a song together. We read a book and we played a game. We had a fun adventure. Now go.